talk about a technique that can be considered uh, advanced, but it was something that when I discovered it, I thought, oh man, I wish I had started doing this a whole lot sooner. And that technique is the use of a back button for focusing. And the technique itself is often called back button focusing. What it allows you to do is to take focus off of the shutter button and move it to a button on the back of the camera. Why would you want to do something like that? Well, let's take a look. I have um, somewhat of an example set up here. I'm going to show this all in live view. Live view and back button focusing don't necessarily work so well together because focusing in general in live view is a little bit slower. You really see the benefits from this when you are looking through the viewfinder and you've selected a single focus point. I have another video up that talks about how to select those single focus points. But I'm going to show it through here um, just for your information. And right now, uh, if I wanted to take a picture of this somewhat cluttered scene, I have a pot, potted plant in the foreground, potted plant in the background, a little bit of a potted plant sticking in on the left-hand side, the, or the right-hand side there, and of course a little Lego minifig up in the potted plant. So let's say that that little Lego minifig is my subject, and I want to take a picture of that. So in this case, I can just touch on there, and I can half press. It achieves focus, it turns green to let me know, and I can take a picture. If I want to take a second picture, because maybe I decide that my exposure wasn't so great, maybe I want it to be a little bit brighter, so I'm just going to adjust my shutter speed to be a little bit slower to let in a little bit more light. And now you can see that there is a slight delay um, as it refocuses and then takes the picture. Not a huge delay, but a slight one. And it really didn't need to refocus in this case because the camera didn't move, the subject didn't move, everything was the same. So we want to be able to take that delay out uh, when we don't need it to refocus. And, and separate the focusing from the picture taking. And you do that in under the custom functions. So I'm going to go to menu and I'm going to come down to custom functions which is on wrench number four. I could touch the screen, this is all touch sensitive, but I'm going to keep my hands out of the way and use the buttons. And from here I'm going to navigate to the right and go to the sixth option shutter slash AE lock button. So the on these options here, the first one refers to what the shutter button will do, and the second one refers to what the AE lock button will do. The AE lock button is this button right here in the top right corner, the second one of the two, um, and on top it has a little symbol of um, an asterisk, and that allows you to lock your exposure down. Something that um, can be useful in some situations, but I find it to be more useful to assign that as a back button focusing because I don't use exposure lock very often. So again, that was custom function number six. So our first one is AF. That means the shutter will autofocus and the AE lock button will do AE lock. The second option is for the front button to do your AE lockdown and the back button to do the autofocus. And we can select that. And now, when we go in here into Live View, and if I touch on the screen, that's going to focus, of course. And again, remember, Live View is not the best example for this. But now, when I half press the shutter, you can see that my options change down here along the side, but um, there is no refocusing that happens. The camera has gotten its focus, it's sitting there, and it will take a picture. And it will take a picture as soon as I press that button with very, very little delay. And that works very well for this situation because, again, the camera didn't move, the subject didn't move. If I moved a bunch, and let's say that I kind of pointed over this way, and you can see that the tracking is still working, and the autofocus is on continuous, so that's working as well. But let's say that I picked it up and moved it back like this. And now, if I want it to focus, I can push this back button here and it will get the focus and pressing the shutter will take the actual button. And we can get in nice and close and we can take a picture. And now this is where I can take a couple of pictures without really moving the camera a whole lot and not having to wait for it to get that refocus. That is quite nice. Now if I was, um, the other way that I can show this is if I turn the continuous autofocus off. So this is the first option, the only one of live view shooting, continuous AF. I'm going to disable that. So now the camera will not try to get focus until I push the button. 
and we can get it nice and close. We can see that it's definitely out of focus. I press that back button and it's not doing a good job in live view of deciding what I want to focus on. Maybe I'm a little too close, but now I can press that shutter button and without waiting for it to get refocused, it can take photos. Um, I find that very useful. There are some situations where this works better than others. Um, a great example is, you know, when you have a variety of subjects and you have foreground clutter, background clutter, and the camera can be very confused about what it should be focusing on. And if you have to take multiple pictures in that situation, the camera might decide to focus on something different each time. And that can be really frustrating to wait for that to happen. And by using the back button focusing, once you get focused once, then you can just fire off as many pictures as you need. And again, if you're you or the subject is moving, um, mostly toward or away from the camera, because parallel doesn't really matter, um, you're still going to be in the plane of focus to some degree, um, then, then it works very well. So that is back button focusing. I also have an article that is a write-up about that. It works on the Canon T4i, T3i, and older cameras as well. And of course, it works on the... Um, higher end cameras like the 5D Mark III even has a button back there that is designated for autofocus on. One of the nice things about that feature is uh, when you go back to auto mode, auto everything, it does ignore that and your shutter button is still your focus button. So you can hand the camera off to somebody and they won't be really confused because there is the downside of when you're in one of those modes where the back button focusing works, your shutter will not focus at all. And so you can take very out of focus pictures that way if you're not paying attention. So that's why it kind of falls into the category of a little bit of advanced features, but there are times where it is very useful and can remove a level of frustration that I think some people have um, when focusing with their cameras. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions about that, leave a comment down below or find me over on the Facebook page. And I thank you for watching.